in the back. Good afternoon, Dr. Mahalik here with the team. Scoping the left shoulder today, first thing we see when we get inside the shoulder is just a minor amount of labral damage here. A little bit of fraying here at the base of the biceps tendon. The biceps tendon itself, as we pull it down into the joint, however, looks normal. That's good. This is your subscapularis. That looks normal. This is the middle gun humor ligament. That looks normal. Inferior gun humor ligament also looks normal. The ball and socket joint here shows a little bit of early wear, very minor, as I told you in the office. Under surface of the rotator cuff has a tear in it right there. You can clearly see the tear. That's what we're going to be fixing for you there. We're going to start cleaning that stuff up first and uh, get that ready for repair. Shaver first. That's the uh, under surface of your uh, rotator cuff right there where the tear is. We're going to sew that back together for you by looking from the other side. We've also taken care of um, this minor amount of labor. So the way we do that is we use this little electroscopical tool essentially to take the glue that we need any failure or damage tissue. It kind of looks just fine. It did the same thing right up here where the biceps had some fraying right there and you saw that. And that's where we're going to fix your rotator cuff. Okay, here's that little bone spur here on the undersurface of your shoulder cap bone. Our primary, we're going to smooth and flatten that off now. It's just coming right up underneath it here with this drilling device. And just flattening that off with the rest of the assembly. And as we do that, what will happen is your body will have more room to heal this rotator cuff. And more importantly, nothing will be abrading the rotator cuff down the road. You shouldn't have any, any possibility of recurrent rotator cuff tearing down the road. Off and on. Can you go back one picture, please? Here, the bone spur is gone now. We're going to work on the end of your collarbone joint next, which is right in behind shaving it. We'll come right in behind here. And behind this uh, soft tissue here is your collarbone. Collarbone uh, typically has a tendency to wear a little bit. Yours is painful in the office. We saw on your, on your plain films and MRI scans some irritation at this joint. That's typically where these bone spurs start to form from. What we do is some preventive maintenance while we're here to decompress this collarbone joint make sure it can't become a problem down the road. What we're going to do is expose it, take a good look at it, see if we need to take any uh, bony spurs off of there. I think we probably will based on the initial inspection. And there you see some wear change right there on the end of that collarbone joint. That's what we're going to be cleaning up for you. What we'll do is just uh, use this little shaving device to clean out the joint, and then we'll use our burring device to create some more room there and get rid of the bony spurs. All right, so there's the end of the collarbone joint once we've got that all cleaned out. There again is the undersurface of the acromion. Looks like we need to do a little bit more smoothing there. Here's your rotator cuff. Here's what we're going to need to work on next. Let's have a burr instead, Jeff. I need to screw that down. Okay, there's the flat undersurface of the acromion, and there's the uh, collarbone joint. Now, this is your rotator cuff right here. Okay, what we're going to be working on next. And what we see is rotator cuff tear, uh, rotator cuff tissue there, and right on top of it is this big, thick, swollen bursa. So what we do is we use this little shaving device and we remove the thick surround bursa so we can see the rotator cuff underneath. We can assess what kind of damage there is here. Very clearly from the other side we saw fairly significant partial thickness tear. My expectation is it's going to communicate here with the other side. I'm going to have to sew that back together. And so uh, we'll expose that and bring it back up on video and show you what that looks like. But this is what that thick swollen bursa looks like I talked about. Here's the uh, rotator cuff tear you have right there. That's what we're going to be sewing back together for you today. We're going to come back up on the video. Right, so there you see your first anchor going down deep inside the bone, the way these anchors work. So they have strong suture attached to them. That strong suture works like a drywall anchor. I hope it works in your wall to hold a picture. Put those down deep inside the bone, each one. We're going to put two of these anchors in today and hold your rotator cuff back together. Once they're deep, very deep inside the bone, you'll see we extract the screwdriver. And uh, once we do, you'll see the stitches sticking out through the uh, through the surface of the bone. Go ahead. And there we see. So it looks good. Right, so now what we're going to do is use uh, some specialized knots to 